In the next part of the experiment, what we're going to do is take the crosshairs um, in the traveling microscope's eyepiece, place them over uh, rings uh, that we see in the ring system, and measure the position of the rings. Now I'm able to adjust the position of the eyepiece by turning this dial, so I just switch it back and forth. You're able to lock it, if you like, using this lever. Um, so at the moment it was, uh, that's locked, and if I turn it the other way, uh, it'll unlock. Sorry. So at the moment that's locked, and if I turn it the other way, it'll unlock, and you can turn it. So there you can see uh, it's just moving very finely. Um, so let me just lock again. And there we go. So now it'll actually move. Do you see how the eyepiece is moving? So what I'm going to do is insert photos of the vernier scale at each position. Um, but people don't tend to remember how to read a vernier scale. Uh, so I'm just going to give a very brief description of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is set this to a specific position. And then I'm going to um, tell you how to read it. So I'm not sure how easy you'll you'll find uh, seeing this on the video to be, but I've included photos um, just after the video link on the PowerPoint, so you should be able to, to see from there. But the idea is that the first thing we want to look on the vernier is where the zero of the upper scale begins. So here's our upper scale, which moves with the traveling microscope, and here's our fixed scale. So we can see where the zero begins, and in the case of this one, it's just going to be here. <laughs> you can see it's not balanced perfectly on the bench. Um, so that gives you your first reading. So you can count from three and you see where on the scale it begins after. So to me that looks like it begins at 3.6. And then we want to look along this upper scale and find where one of the divisions matches exactly with one of the lower divisions. And that's going to give us our second reading. Um, so if we look along here, uh, we're just looking for the point of coincidence, we call it. Now, if we looked at the first part, you can maybe see this on the video. Um, it looks like it's about halfway between uh, 3.6 and 3.7, which means it's probably going to match up around about the fifth point there. So if we have a close look at that. Now, in the lab, uh, we have eyepieces that we can use to kind of blow things up a little. Um, but they're not going to work in this circumstance very easily. So you can always zoom in on the images I've included. But let's have a quick look. So that looks to me like it lines up at the 6.2 uh, up here. So that would give us our complete reading. So it would be 3.662. And you can be pretty precise with that.